Okay, we're back. We're live with uh, History Lens and John David N. And we're going to talk about a, a subject that is, uh, I can't say it's dear to my heart because it's not, but it is near to my heart. It is what is right. going on in the impeachment trial. And John, John has a whole raft of context for us. Hi, John David and Mr. History Lens, how are you? Hey, hey, I'm good. How are you doing? I'm not so yes. good. I, I, oh, I, I, whatever I see or hear about this impeachment makes me ill. I may, I'm losing meals over what's happening in Washington. How do you feel? <laughs> well, look, I'm not throwing up, if that's what you mean. But, uh, you know, it's, it's uh, as a, look, as a liberal Democrat, I'm frustrated by the process and by the prospect that, uh, that you know the the senate will acquit trump that, that they will not uh they will vote against any uh, motion to remove so yeah that's frustrating but when i'm put on my historian's hat and i look at the history of this process it is inherently political and the other thing is it's inherent jay i'm going to say this now because i think you expect this to work out in a kind of rational way and it's not it's never been rational, and it's even been worse than this, believe it or not. I know that's tough to take, but... Okay, well, let's, let's history, break it up into two, two parts. One is yeah. how rational or irrational have previous impeachment attempts <laughs> been? That's the first part. And two, let's talk right. about context. Context in, in, in those days and context now. Um, so right. that we can figure out if we can speculate a little bit. I know historians hate to speculate, but if we can, if we can ah. speculate a little bit, John, about what's going to happen after Donald Trump is 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 is, is uh, I can't even say it is acquitted. Ooh, sticks in right. my throat. Right. What's going to happen right. afterward? Because we need to discuss that sort of on its own merits. Yeah, yeah. So okay. Let's do that at the end. But first of all, we have to go back and look at the uh, the previous impeachments and there were uh, previous impeachment trials, the removal trials in the Senate. And there were two. There was one in 1868 and then again in 1998 and going into 1999. Um, and of course, the first was uh, President Andrew Johnson was impeached by the Republican controlled House of Representatives in 1868, and then it moved to the Senate for a trial. So let's take that first. Now, this is a, to me, this is a really interesting story because uh, what, what happens is the whole of Reconstruction gets, gets kind of enveloped into uh, Republicans' contempt for Johnson, and then eventually their, uh, their decision to impeach him. So let me lay the groundwork. So, okay, the end of the Civil War has ended. Lincoln is assassinated. Andrew Johnson, a, a Southern Democrat, takes the presidency. Now, Andrew Johnson takes the presidency because he was, in fact, an anti-Confederate. He was a pro-Union Southern Democrat. And uh, so Lincoln thought, hey, for, for the unity of the country, choose a Southern Democrat to be my vice president. Then Lincoln is assassinated, and this guy gets to be president. Now, Johnson is definitely pro-union. He's, he's an American nationalist, but he is also an out-and-out racist. He's a white supremacist, and he makes this very clear, actually, during his administration. And so he allows the South to reconstruct itself very rapidly without any change. And, uh, and you know, there's, there's no punishment for the South and no punishment for slaveholders. And what you get in the South is a situation that is very similar to that under slavery for the for the former slaves. They have to sign these long-term contracts. So, so you've got all this going on, and, and but you have a Congress which is a Republican majority, and they don't, they're not sure they could, they're not sure what to think about this guy at first, but it, very quickly they sour on him. By the end of 1865, really just like four months after Lincoln's assassination, uh, the uh, the Republican Congress has said, this is, he's a bad guy. We, we're we're going to have to do something about it. So what they do is they, they're able to achieve sup, a supermajority in, in the election of 1866, and then they go about the business of reconstructing uh, the South themselves without Johnson, because they have a supermajority, they pass laws, Johnson vetoes them, and then they pass them over his veto. Okay, okay so, that's so differentiation point number one. 
um, that they can override him, you know, after the after the That's attempt. Right. At so you have the super majority now. Now what happens is, uh, so you have leftover administrators from Lincoln, Edwin Stanton, very important. He Secretary is the of War. Secretary of War under Lincoln, and he stays in that position in the Johnson administration. Okay, Johnson doesn't like him. This guy is a radical Republican. He's an abolitionist. He's very much in the camp of the, the left wing of the Republican Party. So, so he wants to remove him. It's 1867. And, and the Republicans, the way they're doing Reconstruction in the South is through the military. This is really kind of strange. But so Stanton is following the orders of the Congress, not the president, who is also the commander in chief. Very interesting. Congress has really taken control of Reconstruction. And there's really nothing that Johnson can do about it except get rid of Stanton, put his own guy in there. And then, you know, then he can maybe stop uh, Congress from running Reconstruction, withdraw troops from the South, end what he sees as this terrible Reconstruction, which is enfranchising African-Americans and offering new civil rights. He's, he's appalled by this. Uh, and, and so, so he, so he tries, so, so what happens is Congress knows that, they're, that he wants to get rid of Stanton. So they pass a law called the Tenure of Office Act. Yeah, you're following me so far. Yep, go ahead. Okay, Tenure of Office Act allows Congress, it makes actually, it, it makes it against the law for the president to remove anybody that Congress has approved for his cabinet. So, the, so he cannot now under the law remove Stanton, except that there's a clause that says you can remove uh, a cabinet officer during a recess. So Congress is on recess. Uh, Johnson moves to uh, to fire Stanton. Stanton actually refuses and locks himself in his office for several days. <laughs> really, uh, <laughs> it's a real mess. Stanton uh, was a then, very was a very um, willful guy, and, and during the Civil War, I remember he was a very tough uh, war secretary uh, during the oh, Civil yeah. War. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. He's so he's so he's a strong guy. And you have these other strong, very willful congressmen who are who are running, essentially running the country. They're running Reconstruction right now. And uh, so, so that's a mess. And then Congress says, wait a minute, this guy, this president has violated the law. Let's impeach him. And so they begin impeachment. It passes through the House. Now, one difference, big difference between now and then is that they pass 11 impeachment articles, some of them very detailed articles. And this probably was a mistake on their part. Uh, to try to kind of sell uh, impeachment, they they thought broad and big. I think the the uh, the Democrats this time around thought small and focused. It, in the end, it might not matter, quite frankly. But uh, so so uh, so they so the the trial moves to the Senate, and the Senate convenes a trial. And now it it's unbelievable. Anyway, uh, there's all kinds of horse trading going on, Jay. It's it's astounding uh, the level of corruption that accompanies this trial. Okay, so questions? Yeah. Questions, Jay? Well, I, are, yeah. You suggesting, are you suggesting that, um, that his acquittal um, gave him mm, more power, uh, that he went back to no, uh, the way, the very no. things that, no, we'll uh, get, that we'll they get were complaining about? Yeah, we'll, we'll get to that in a second. So, no, actually, what I'm suggesting is that the process was deeply flawed. It was highly political, deeply flawed, and it was accompanied by a tremendous amount of corruption. So, for one thing, you have the the, the Speaker of the House, Benjamin Wade, is in line to become president if Johnson is impeached. He gets to vote articles of impeachment that would put himself into the presidency. Okay, there's you know, some people called him out on this and said, hey, you should you should recuse yourself from this vote. He didn't. Uh, so you have that situation because at that point there was no provision for appointing a vice president. So the Speaker of the House immediately becomes president. So then you also have in the Senate, uh, you have several senators that are being bribed. Uh, William Fessenden, who is a senator, he's He's on the, you know, he's kind of in the middle. Should I vote to convict or not? Uh, he's, a, he's a Republican from Maine. He's still an abolitionist, but a moderate. 
he gets offered the ambassadorship to the United Kingdom, to the Great Britain, in return for a vote to convict. Now, in the end, he does not convict. He votes to acquit. Uh, another senator, uh, Samuel Pomeroy from Kansas, goes to, so he's a Republican. It looks like he might vote to convict. He goes to the Johnson people and says, if you pay me $40,000, I will vote to uh, acquit. Now there's <laughs> corruption for you. <laughs> so yeah, so <laughs> really, uh, it, it's very interesting stuff, the way this the horse trading was going on. So in the end, uh, what, what most uh, senators decided, and these are Republicans because the Republicans hold a supermajority, they could have easily convicted him. Mm -hmm. uh, in the end, what most Republicans come down on is, is, is the breaking of the office of the, the, the Tenure of Office Act, is that actually an impeachable offense? Because, offense? because the problem is the Tenure of Office Act, it looked like it might be un, an unconstitutional infringement on the powers of the president. So, mm -hmm. And eventually that's what happens. Congress actually repeals the Tenure of Office oh, Act. Interesting. And, what, and about the other, what about the other um, 10 articles? Right, so so they didn't even get to most of them. They voted two of them. They were both voted down. Then they recess, and the the last vote, it was it it was voted down by one vote, and a guy named Ross Edmund Ross from Kansas was the deciding vote in both of those articles. They take a ten day recess. There's Edmund Ross right there. Thank you for that, Eric. And so they take a ten day recess, and in the ten days they begin an investigation of Ross. It, with questions about bribery, whether or not he was bribed to, to vote to acquit. <laughs> so so this, he's got a lot of pressure on him to vote yes on the third article, but he doesn't. He votes no, and and so then the Republicans give up, and, and Johnson is acquitted. Uh, uh, but Johnson is really, uh, he's, he's destroyed by the process. Well, now, how do you Johnson, mean that? Was his power diminished by it? Right. So he had already lost a great deal of power to Congress because Congress had taken Reconstruction out of his hands. Uh, but at this point, then, he loses any sort of credibility. Uh, Democrats disown him. He tries to run again. Uh, mm. In fact, he does serve in, in the Senate for a short time, but the, without any, you know, official Democratic support. Mm. Uh, and so uh, he's, he's considered, at the end of this, he's considered persona non grata. Mm, yeah. and, and, so you know, the, the, I would say there's two distinguishing points that you mentioned, really. One is, yeah. um, you know, that this was not lockstep. That, yes, right. there was corruption. You could buy a vote. Um, and the strange, bizarre, corrupt things were happening under the hood. But it was not right. unanimous. And, and that, that there was a certain right. dynamic going on, a certain unpredictability yeah. going on, as opposed to now when there is no unpredictability at all. Lockstep completely. That is really different. The other thing is that when when it was all over back in Andrew Johnson, uh, he he was um, he was damaged. He was de he right. was decredibilized, so to speak, uh, and he didn't have the power anymore. Um, right. And so, that's that's quite different than what would happen, what will happen when Trump is acquitted, don't you think? Right. Well, you know, the the takeaway is that this is an intensely political process. It's a constitutional remedy, but the founders built it as a as an intensely political process. It's done in the Senate. It's not done by the Supreme Court. They could have easily said, well, the Supreme Court decides on whether to remove a president. Uh, they didn't. They, the founders recognized that politics was built into the process and there was no way to get it out of the process. And the idea was to, uh, I think, quite frankly, make the bar pretty high for actual removal, at least that's the way that uh, the senators interpreted uh, impeachment in that first go round. Well, let me ask uh, you this, John, from all that you know, from all that happened with Andrew Johnson, we'll get to Bill Clinton in a minute. Um, right. Were the founders right? Did they call it right? Or was this some kind of monumental mistake where they really failed to appreciate human nature and the way and the way the government really worked internally? Uh, could they have done better? Yeah, I mean, I, I think uh, one could make an argument that the process is flawed, that it's too political, that, you know, it's, it's uh, uh, 
maybe it should be done by a judiciary. Maybe it should be done by a combination of senators and and uh, and Supreme Court justices. I'm I'm not sure, but yeah, I think I think uh, this go around seems to this go around with Trump seems to suggest that it is flawed. Uh, that yeah. that we need to revise this the articles on impeachment in yeah, the Constitution. Put note to that, by the way. Footnote to that is uh, the way we way we see Roberts conducting himself uh, as the uh, the moderator, the, the judge. There is a, right, there is a precedent in the 1868 process. So Salmon P. Chase is the presiding uh, Supreme Court justice. He is an abolitionist. He was a part of the founding of the Republican Party. He's a he's a very prominent, you know, uh, left uh, left Republican, but. Uh, Salmon actually argues that uh, Johnson should get a fair trial. He's really arguing for this, and he wants evidence introduced. He he uh, he proposes a motion to allow Johnson to introduce evidence that the Tenure of Office Act, Act was actually unconstitutional, uh, and the Republican Congress votes him down. So the Republican Congress they did not want a fair trial in this case. Mm. Uh, they want they wanted you know in majority they wanted a conviction. That's quite similar to uh, to the Republicans this time around, who do not want a fair trial. They actually want an acquittal. Yeah. Uh, so so it's you know the thing is, party in power, right? The Republicans were in power, and so they actually, a few Republicans acted quite selflessly. Jay, here's a point: all seven of those who voted against removal never served as never were elected again to an elected office. They lost. They could have never stood for election again. And they understood this, that they were sacrificing their, their political careers, at least as elected officials. Oh, that is such a distinction between now. <clears throat> it seems to me the Senate, <clears throat> they, 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 they vote on the basis of how they can save their jobs, perpetuate their office. That's, what's, that's right. what motivates right. them. And that's what the right. people who would corrupt them use as a weapon. Right. So, so the precedent is a pretty good precedent, actually, a precedent that, that you should vote your conscience, not your politics and vote, you know, the evidence and not, uh, you know, not you know, grind your ax against someone else. So, yeah, this is a problem. This is definitely a problem with this, but, but mostly this is what has happened. Okay. So uh, in this case, the vote was not completely on party lines. Otherwise, Johnson would have been impeached. In the Clinton case, the vote was very close to party lines in the Senate. So, uh, so uh, you know, it's the politics is built into it. You know, I, I, it's uh, it, there's nothing new in that. There's nothing new in the re the Republicans using politics to try to to get Trump off. And uh, uh, it's anyway. Uh, Would shall you we agree move with on? me, John, to say this that <clears throat> politics, of course, politics and poker, but. Um, Bottom line is that the politics of the time of Johnson, and for that matter, the politics some 20 years ago with uh, Clinton, are different than the politics today. We have a different country. We have different, um, you know, different divisions, if you will, and different politics. Yeah. And when you yeah. change the context, you are changing the process that relies on a certain, a certain je ne sais quoi in the politics. We, we don't have those politics anymore. We have politics that make right. people do completely right. irrational things. Right. Yeah. So the thing is, uh, the divisions uh, in, the, in the Johnson movement were actually more severe than they are now. Uh, I mean, the nation had just gone through a civil war. I mean, they were, they were four, five, pardon me, three years removed from a civil war. So tremendous divisions and tensions. There's violence in the South against African-Americans and against whites who are allied with African-Americans. So so it's actually, you know, the tensions are much greater at that point. Uh, but you did have these senators who considered themselves to be selfless uh, kind of guarantors of the Constitution. And it is a constitutional process. I really think if, if Republican senators are thinking about evidence and thinking about uh, uh, calling witnesses, that they need to think about this as a constitutional process. It's not, it shouldn't, it's, it's not designed to be a political remedy. It's designed to be a constitutional remedy. So there's, in, in other words, there's no, uh, there's nothing that says that Trump, if he was removed, 
would not run again. It's not a political remedy and it's not a legal remedy. Trump does not get thrown into jail because of it. It's a constitutional remedy. This is where I think the Republicans today have, have really fallen down is there's very few Republicans. There might be three or four in the Senate who say, hey, we should have witnesses. But I, there, there's certainly not enough Republicans to convict Trump. And it's very clear evidence is continuing to come out that Trump actually did this, that, that it was a quid pro quo, that he was abusing the powers of the office to try to get, uh, you know, this, this dirt on Joe Biden and his family. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, um, I just, uh, you know, I wonder about the moral aspect of it. You know, you have the constitutional, you have the political, you have the legal, right. I suppose, you know, because you could, I mean, if I were the chief justice someday, maybe, if I were the chief justice and I was presiding over this, I would be acting like a trial judge. And, you know, yeah. I don't think they could stop me uh, because I right. am the judge yeah. and, and I would be doing much more than Roberts is doing. Um, yeah, but and, since, and I would be imposing basic legal principles of fairness right. and impartiality. But we don't have that here. We do not have that here. Well, we do not have morality here either. Uh, yeah, right. Okay, let's take the the uh, the, the uh, Supreme Court Justice, you know, Roberts. Okay, the precedent is that the the Supreme Court Justice can be overruled, uh, and and that's the precedent that was set in the Johnson impeachment. Quite frankly. And that is not changed. So it's a political, it's a it's a political process. So uh, you know, th 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 there's no way that Roberts on his own is going to do this. I don't think. No, um, no, you, I, he's maybe, not going to do this. Yeah. Be there, and maybe you should be in there. <laughs> thank you, thank you, John. <laughs> yeah, and, right, right. Okay. Okay. So let's is, let's look at today. We have five minutes left. Uh, let's look at today. Okay. Let's look at, um, you know, how this differs from both of those two impeachments. And, you, you know, you've mentioned right. that in the case of Johnson, he was like D, he fell from grace. He fell from political grace and he, he fell from he influence and it, it ruined him. In the case of Trump, uh, he has not fallen from grace among his constituents, among his right. base. It's, so far, right. it hasn't ruined him. In fact, arguably, it's made him more popular because he drills down and and doubles down all the time and never and never I, agrees, I don't, never apologizes. I think he's more popular. What we've seen is that polling on impeachment, uh, support for impeachment has steadily ramped up since the Mueller report, report was released. Uh, and it's at, it's a 51, maybe 52% uh, of Americans who think he should be removed from office. Uh, so this is, you know, the, the majority of Americans actually think the guy did what he did and they, they think it's an impeachable offense. So in that way, the politics of this, I can't see how this improves Trump's position. You know, it's, it's, not, uh, it's, it's, it's not a good thing for him. Now, Bill Clinton, of course, when he was uh, impeached and almost removed, um, the, the votes were really party line in the Senate. Uh, uh, but, uh, uh, but so, uh, you know, so he was not removed. Uh, but there were, you know, in one case, a majority of there, and there's Clinton, yeah, there's Clinton and uh, the, the headlines from the New York Times and other, other uh, newspapers. But so, so in Clinton's case, um, mo many senators felt like he was kind of entrapped into this. He did a really, really stupid thing, like one of the most stupid things that a president has ever done. Uh, but he... You know, the truth is that the, the impeachers, uh, Henry Hyde and these other prosecutors, they were all having affairs themselves. So <laughs> it's so, Washington you know, after all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. It was, you know, so, uh, uh, so anyway, so what, what he did is he lied. He shouldn't have lied. And he tried to hide the facts, which is obstruction of justice. So uh, that was dumb. But Clinton, of course, could not run again. Johnson could have run again if he had had political support, but he didn't, you know, the party abandoned him. Uh, Trump has put himself at the center of the Republican Party. So he is going to, I mean, his reelection campaign is going forward. Um, the, the, I think the real, so I think it damages him, quite frankly. I mean, his polling has declined a little bit since the start of the trial in the Senate. But, but factor uh, this, John, factor this. You know, yeah. Friday or soon enough, we'll, we will have an acquittal, I'm sorry to say. Um, and then yeah. he will be able to say that he was exonerated. He'll twist that like he twisted the result in the Mueller report. Same thing. 
and he'll yeah. say that the, the, the Democrats are just trying to reverse the uh, his God-given mandate mandate from the election in 2016. Um, yeah. And it was all a hoax and a fraud and uh, so forth. That's uh, embarrassing. And, and he's going he's he'll he'll have a benefit of that. He'll he will be campaigning on that basis for now until November. Um, and and I, I suggest that that, it, that he will make some make some hay with it. Don't you think? I don't think so. No, I think it damages him. The thing is, uh, when you, again the polling has shown. Uh, a steady increase among Americans who want who see that he did something wrong and should be removed. So I, I don't see how you can win if 51% of Americans say, look, this guy should have been removed from office. I mean, there have been questions about his fitness for office from the beginning, yes. right? And, and so I think the majority of Americans are going, I'm not sure we would want four years of this, four more years of this guy. He really, he scares me, he makes me nervous. He's Looks to me like he broke the law. Looks to me like he's abusing his power. You know, there are Americans, uh, you know, a lot of Americans see him as having abused the Constitution. You know, the announcement about the wall, which was, which, you know, went through a congressional vote, no funding. And then he decided on his own to take funding. That's, that's, a, that's an abuse. That's a violation of the Constitution very clearly. And I think the Supreme Court will come to that. But I don't think, I don't think it helps him at all. I think he's in very deep political trouble. He's going to be the Republican standard holder, but he's going to go down, I think. I don't think he can be reelected. And I think the Republicans are going to have a surprise. I think, I mean, there, there'll be some places that hold, but look, we elected a Democratic uh, governor in Kentucky last time around. The party loyalty is slipping. It's uh, it's breaking apart. What should be happening happening in the Republican Party is an all out, no holds uh, fist fight between, uh, you know, metaphorically between Republicans because their party they've lost their way. I mean, they they were once a party that stood for, that had principles, and now they stand only for Trump. It's very strange. Yeah. Well, I think what's really interesting is uh, is that the public really hasn't spoken on this, and the polls don't really tell us. But if, if I'm an ordinary mm, Republican, uh, even a committed to Trump Republican, and I yeah. see the Senate doing what they are doing in lockstep and rejecting all yeah. the evidence, uh, making lying when they argue and so forth, and uh, doing yeah. that 5347 and issue after issue after issue, I can't possibly have confidence and faith in them to run, run the country. And I have to be yeah, dismayed I mean, about that at some level of my consciousness. And therefore, uh, I think what's going to happen is the, the Republican Senate is going gonna, is gonna to lose big time in November. And the last question I put to you, and you only have a minute yeah. to answer it, is, no, you know, no, going no. back to Andrew Johnson and the supermajority that the, uh, you know, the, I guess the Republicans had at that time. Um, you know, what, what happens if public, public opinion switches a miscalculation by mcconnell it switches against his lockstep senate what happens then to trump one minute well i think trump's not elected and then as i said i think an all-out brawl takes place in the republican party because i think that a number of senators have been chafing i mean it's it's clear actually that a number of republicans have been chafing under trump's rule if he's if he's rejected by the voters, uh, this is big trouble. He will not give in. He will not stop being involved in politics. And what I, what I, again, it's it's going to cause this terrible, terrible uh, division. This this cracking up uh, of the Republican Party, a great schism in the Republican Republican Party, which should have happened. Yeah. Uh, in 2016, but it yeah. didn't happen. Well, you know, it's a yeah. funny. We live at a funny intersection historically, John. <laughs> On the one hand, you know, we have the uh, coronavirus from China and it right. spreads out and it makes uh, it, 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 it's terrifying for so many people. It's changing uh, the economy, changing so many things, and it will continue to, to make a dramatic effect on humanity. At the same time, yeah. we have this thing, this process, this dynamic going on in Washington and in the red states. And you know what? There's a comparison. It's it's oh. a it's a sort of a political virus we have here, and <laughs> that's a subject for our discussion next time. John yeah, David, okay. and right. this is history lens. I've been talking about the history of impeachment in this country. Thank you so much, John. Okay, take care, Jay. Aloha.